Okay, I'm talking with Paul Boatson about the uh, recent Tides Conference. Uh, Paul, you recently attended the uh, Tourism Investment for the Development of Enterprise and Sustainability Conference in Apia, Samoa, as a representative of Sustain Sustainability Group EcoSteps. Can you give us an idea of the discussions that centred around sustainability at the conference? Uh, thank you, Rich. Um, yes, the TIDES, as it's known, a lovely acronym conference uh, in Apia, Samoa, um, in February, was a, a fantastic opportunity uh, to also showcase sustainability initiatives as they relate to the tourism industry and tourism opportunities in the South Pacific. Um, Clearly climate change is one of the, and the, and the responses that are required is one of the key drivers for tourism in the South Pacific to become more sustainable. Um, Could you just define sustainable tourism, your, your definition of sustainability in, in tourism? Well sustainability means different things to different people and I won't get academic in terms of interpretation. Um, we're talking about planning and implementing for the current generation uh, as well as future generations, so not com compromising the future of islander communities. And tourism uh, is a, a key element of sustainable development to ensure the, the long-term prosperity of local communities. Um, there are probably three big uh, sustainable development opportunities tourism, uh, fishing, uh, and in the, the western part of the South Pacific forestry, and then of course into Papua New Guinea uh, mining and resources. Uh, but sustainability is about the future, not just about the short term, and it's about the balance of social, cultural, economic, and environmental outcomes. Just um, concentrating on the um, climate change uh, you mentioned then, uh, you wrote a letter to the Samar Observer following the conference where you spoke of the need for sustainable tourism in relation to climate change. Could you just elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure. Um, well, obviously the most immediate impact from human-induced climate change, and let there be no mistake, human-induced climate change is, in, is occurring uh, and it has serious ramifications, particularly for the low-lying uh, coral, atoll, um, uh, island nations of the South Pacific and the broader Pacific. Sea level rise is already beginning to inundate some of these local communities. Now clearly if you're building tourism infrastructure it needs to be resilient to uh, storm surges associated with increased cyclones, sea level rise and, and, and so on. So uh, protecting the assets uh, it has to be sustainable. Um, now we're not talking about building huge walls and, 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 and so on, but sometimes the positioning of cultural centres uh, to attract tourists or major hotels, they clearly uh, have to be designed and built in such a way that they withstand uh, inundation or, or other storm surges associated with uh, climate change. I suppose while we're talking inundation, we can talk about the tsunami in Samoa. Uh, late last year which forced the cancellation of the first Tides conference I believe. Did you actually see the effect that it had on tourism in Samoa while you were there? Uh, I was uh, in Samoa only for just under a week this time around. Uh, it would have been stretching things to, to, to get across to the other side of the island to have a proper look uh, and I didn't want to rush it. I'll be going back to Samoa. That'll be a better opportunity for me and others, other colleagues to, to see some of that firsthand. But let, let, let's get the record straight. The tsunami uh, of late last year only affected while well, it killed over 100 people, injured many others and the livelihoods of villagers um, and uh, tourists were affected. It was only really in the southeast uh, part of the coast 
uh, of the main island uh, of Samoa. Um, the devastation was not as widespread as, for example, the Boxing Day tsunami of 2004, and they are bouncing back very quickly. Some of the uh, traditional uh, fallets, uh, which tourists love, have been rebuilt. They're operational again. They need more assistance, uh, but the tourism industry is, is thriving once again in Samoa, and it's a very positive outlook. And the future for sustainable, sustainable tourism in the Pacific Islands in general, do you see have, as having a good future? It does, but the, at the core of it, uh, the platform has to be sustainability. Okay. Um, going also back to the climate change threat um, and the resilience that required, it's also about shifting not just the tourism industry, but these economies off the dependency on diesel imported, which is very expensive and it's of course uh, greenhouse gas emitting, to renewables, to clean energy. Um, now Samoa already is very keen to become one of the first in the world to be a carbon free economy or carbon neutral, I think is probably a better term. Now for example one of the staple uh, commodities in the South Pacific, particularly Samoa, uh, but not just Samoa, uh, are coconut palms. Uh, the use of that uh, is varied and many. It includes uh, biofuel, um, there's talk of uh, gasification plants that could produ produce nearly all of uh, Samoa's energy, uh, complemented maybe with solar and wind power. So renewables has to be at the core of this. And I think tourism industry is in a very good position to take advantage of funding opportunities from the European Union, um, AusAid, uh, NZ Aid, and, and elsewhere uh, to make this a reality. Uh, you mentioned funding for uh, renewables, um, and where would that come from? Would that need other countries to support Pacific Islands? In the short term and medium term, definitely. Um, there's nothing like funding uh, uh, and donor funding uh, to kickstart and, and make uh, renewable energy a reality, especially we're talking about very small economies uh, relative to, say, Australia uh, or New Zealand. Um, New Zealand Aid and AusAid are already uh, doing some fantastic things in the South Pacific. Um, they, uh, New Zealand Aid uh, attended the, the conference. Um, they have a reciprocal arrangement or an arrangement with AusAid so they don't double up or duplicate. So uh, they're all working off the same page. When it comes to renewables, uh, also the European Union, and this notion of carbon credits, so this is uh, Western countries investing in, in the South Pacific, based in, in terms of uh, perhaps coconut palm plantations, uh, but renewable energy initiatives where credits can be claimed against those activities. Now, this is an area I'm not an expert on, but I see there would be great potential. And certainly the European uh, Union and 